Okay, Mr. Quick here, jumping into Eureka Math slash Engaged New York Math, Module 1, Lesson 7. Associated ratios and the value of a ratio. What's that mean, the value of a ratio? Well, I know that if I go in my closet and I have, uh, let's see, let's say three pairs of pants for every uh, four shirts, then my pairs of pants to shirts ratio is three to four. The value then would be if I wanted to write that as a fraction, right? So again, pants to shirts, three fourths. If I wanted to flip it and say shirts to pants, I'd have to write four thirds. Let's go into some examples of that. All right, example one, which of the following, and I should say this comes directly from Eureka Math, which of the following correctly models the number of gumballs that is five thirds the number of, excuse me, the number of red gumballs, that is five-thirds, the number of white gumballs. Well, it looks like five-thirds, that's, that's a fraction. What about the ratio? It works the same way. If we're going red to white, red to white, those should be circles, that's a colon, that's okay. Uh, we know red is going to be five, because it's the first number. White is going to be three. So as a ratio, it's five to three. It's a fraction, it's five-thirds. So if I go through here, and I just know that, well, there's five red and three white, I just need to look and see which ones have five red. A, one, two, three red, nope, can't be A. B, one, two, three, nope, looking for five. Can't be, or excuse me, that was C, can't be C. B, one, two, three, four, five, I'm looking for five, so we'll put that as a maybe. Go down to D. One, two, three, four, five. That's also a maybe. So it's either B or D. Now I know there are three white gumballs. Where it says white, let's see. One, two, three. We have five to three. That looks like a strong possibility. And down here we have one, two, three, four, five, six. It's more than three. We know that's not it. So our answer is, of course, B. All right, example two. Duration of two films are modeled below. Duration is just a fancy word for length, the length of two films. For film A, we have one, two, three, four, five parts of our tape diagram that are equal. For part B, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven parts of the tape diagram. Well, the ratio of A to B, A to B, is five to seven. I'm going to write that as a fraction. Going from A to B would be five sevenths. So if we look here, we're going from A to B. The value then, 5 sevenths. If we were going to flip it and go from B to A, I know that would actually be five or 7 to 5. If I was going to write that as a fraction, the first number becomes my numerator, second number becomes my denominator. So the length of film B is 7 fifths the length of film A. Okay, let's look at another problem here. It says in exercise one, Sammy and Caden went fishing using live shrimp as bait. Sammy brought eight more shrimp than Caden brought. When they combined their shrimp, they had 32 shrimp all together. So they brought all this shrimp, they had 32 total shrimp. Sammy brought eight more than Caden though. So Sammy had more. How many shrimp did each boy bring for part A? Well, I don't know, but we can figure it out. We're gonna look at Sammy and Caden. I'm gonna make a, a tape diagram. Sammy brought a certain amount of shrimp. Caden brought a certain amount of shrimp. Now it looks like they have an equal amount of shrimp, which is true. Because if I have $5 and you have $10, well, your first $5 equals the same amount as my $5, right? So the first amount of shrimp that they have is the same. But then we can extend that and say that Sammy brought eight more. So looking at this, I know that Sammy and Caden both brought a certain amount of shrimp. We don't know the total answer there. Sammy then brought another eight shrimp, so he had eight more shrimp than Caden. The total number is 32 total shrimp. Well, if I have my 32 shrimp and I take away the eight, that leaves me with 24 shrimp. 24 shrimp is how much they each have when they have an equal number divided by 2. We have to divide it by 2 because of those 24 shrimp, Sammy has half, Caden has half. 
2 goes into 2 once, goes into 4 twice. We end up with Sammy has 12, Caden has 12. So how much did each boy bring? Sammy brought 12 and 8, so he brought 20. Caden brought 12. Part B, what is the ratio of shrimp Sammy brought to the number of shrimp that Caden brought? Well, we're going Sammy to Caden. Sammy brought 20. Caden brought 12. Ratio is 20 to 12. Express the number of shrimp Sammy brought as a fraction of the shrimp that Caden brought. Well, again, we had 20 to 12, which was Sammy to Caden. If we're going to do it as a fraction, this first number is our numerator, the 20. Second number here, then is our denominator, 20 twelfths. Part D. What is the ratio of the number of shrimp Sammy brought to the total number of shrimp? Well, again, we're going Sammy, this time, to total. Sammy to total. So Sammy, oh, excuse me, we're not doing a fraction, we're doing a ratio. Sammy brought, we know, how much? 20. Total then, we go back up here, 12 and 8 is 20, plus 12, 32. So 20 to 32. If I wanted to write that as a uh, fraction of the total, we can look down here and say, because that's what the next question is, what fraction of the total did Sammy bring? Well, he brought 20 parts. The total, or the whole, amount of shrimp was 32. He brought 20 out of 32. Knowing that we're in sixth grade, we're going to have to simplify that. I look at this, and I can say, okay, what would be my magic number that I'm going to divide both of those by? Four goes into both of them. Two goes into both of them. Uh, we're going to go 4, the bigger number, right? 20 divided by 4 gives you 5. 32 divided by 4 gives you 8. So he brought 5 eighths of the total shrimp. Okay, we're going to do something a little unusual, and we're going to actually look at the exit ticket on this video. The uh, reason I want to do that is I think we need a few more examples, and we're going to just go ahead and roll with it. doesn't mean we won't work on some other questions in class as well. Um, again, I'm going pretty quickly. I'll be honest with you, I've actually already recorded a version of this video that was too long to upload to YouTube, so I'm doing it again, and I'm going a little bit faster, but the good thing is you have the video, you can rewind, you can pause, you can go back, so it's there for you, and I'm here for you as well. So, Alyssa's extended family is staying at the lake house this weekend for a family reunion. She's in charge of making homemade pancakes for the entire group. The pancake mix requires two cups of flour, for every 10 pancakes. Write a ratio to show the relationship between the number of cups of flour and the number of pancakes made. So our pancake ratio here is going to be cups of flour to pancakes made. If I go back up here, we're looking at two cups of flour for every 10 pancakes. So our ratio then would be two to 10. Okay, determine the value of the ratio. Oh, okay, value. When we're looking at the value of a ratio, we're looking at a fraction. So if we have two cups of flour to 10 pancakes, we know this now becomes our numerator. This becomes our denominator. We have two tenths. That is the value of that ratio. Two cups of flour to 10 pancakes made. Again, here, let's take a look. If we have two cups of flour to every 10 pancakes, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We can simplify this. And I'm going to give some credit uh, because I actually wanted to see how someone else did it. So I looked at the Embark online video. Um, so credit to them for this example. One, we know two tenths, we can simplify that. Two tenths. Our magic number we can divide both of those by is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 10 divided by 2 is 5. So the value of that ratio actually becomes 1 fifth. Another way to look at it is for every 2 cups of flour, we have 10 pancakes. Or if we do half, 1 cup of flour, and then half would be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We know that for every one cup of flour, you can make five pancakes. Okay, 
jumping down here to number three. Use the value of the ratio, so we're looking at one-fifth, to fill in the following two multiplicative comparison statements. It sounds complicated, it's really asking you for the value. Number of pancakes is how many times the number of, flour, of cups of flour? Well, we know if we're looking at one-fifth, that was flour to pancakes. So if it's asking for pancakes first, we've got to flip it. That would be five to one. Five over one we know is just five. So the number of pancakes made is five times the amount of cups of flour needed. Because again, if you're gonna make use one cup and that's gonna make five, one times five gives you five. So the number of pancakes is five times the amount of cups of flour needed. If we look at our original ratio, which was two to 10, two times five is 10. So it's again, five times greater. Okay, part B. The amount of cups of flour needed is blank of the number of pancakes made. Well, if we're going flour to pancakes, we're looking at one fifth. That's our original ratio, flour to pancakes. If you said two tenths, you're not wrong. You're just not simplified yet. So you could simplify that to one fifth. Okay, if Alyssa has to make 70 pancakes, how many cups of flour will she have to use? Well, we know the ratio flour to pancakes is one, two, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, one to five. If you did two to 10, if you did two flours and 10 pancakes, you'd be okay. And we know then 70 pancakes, so this equals 70. There are one, two, three, four, five equal spots. We've got to do 70 divided by five. Five goes into 50 10 times. 50 to 70 is 20, so five goes into 20 four times. We know then that each of these are 14. 14, 14, 14, 14, 14. Since these boxes are the same size, then you would need 14 cups of flour. 14 cups of flour. Make sure you label that. Okay. I know that was fast. You can always go back through the video. You also have me as a resource. We'll continue to talk about this and go deeper in class. All right. Thanks for watching.